the name of the Lord, we appreciate God for the rendition of the choir. May the Almighty God continually bless all of them. May your anointing continue to be on the increase in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So I want us to, wherever we are, bow our heads and maybe lift up your hands just a, a little bit above your head and just appreciate God for another wonderful time that we have come, another time to study at his feet. Let's give him glory. Let's give him honor. God is worthy. He's mighty. He's reliable. He's dependable. We want to say thank you, our maker. Thank you for what you have done on this particular platform over the years and months. And Lord, we thank you for what you are doing again now. To you be glory, Lord. To you be honor. To you be majesty. Thank you, eternal Father. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be honored. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worship. Amen. Let's pray. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth adore. Even angels bow before him. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth adore. Even angels bow before him. What a mighty God we serve. The King of all kings, the unchangeable changer, the Lord who has the verdict of life and success, the God of yesterday, the God of today, you are God because nobody can replace you, you'll be forever. Thank you the King Eternal. Thank you, Eternal Excellency. Thank you, Glorious I Am. We want to appreciate you for what you have done. Lord, we say thank you to you. Amen. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. We are blessing your name, Lord. Today, that is the first day of our fasting. Thank you, everlasting Father. That even despite that we are waiting, we can still come and study. We say thank you to you. Amen. Lord Almighty, receive our thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. Tonight, as we go into your word, you are the eternal word. You are the only one who can teach us. You are the only one who can open up our heart. Please open our heart to be able to know the mysteries of your word, the mystery of success, the big tree of walking with the Lord in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I confess I don't know nothing, but I submit my head, my heart, and my mouth. And everyone listening, watching, I commit their faculty to you, that as we study together, you will teach us together in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will heal us, you will touch us, you will do great and mighty things for us. And God of heaven, at the end of today, will have reason to glorify your name. Amen. Do so in the name of Jesus. Amen. We thank you for our Father and the Lord who have given us this platform. Let grace be on the increase in his life. Amen. Both him and his wife, let them continue to wallow in good health, in anointing, in favor, in wisdom, in progress in the name of Jesus. Amen. And Father Almighty, after all is said and done, let all of us make it to heaven. Amen. Thank you, eternal Father. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Let somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We want to appreciate God and the feedback 
that we are getting from people who are watching. May the good Lord continually bless all of them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, like we said on this platform, please keep writing and keep asking your questions. And when we generalize questions and requests, we are able to come up with what the people of God are willing to know more about. And so today we will be looking at the at uh, Joseph's secret of success. Joseph's secret of success. There is no doubt if there is one person in the Bible, if there is one individual in the Bible that made it in life, despite all predicaments, despite all the challenges, even when the parents are not there, when the brother are standing against him, is one person. So we're going to re read from Genesis 49 and hopefully we'll be able to consider some few points from that particular place and um, by the grace of God after that we call it a day. Genesis 49 22 to 24 Genesis 49 22 to 24 Joseph is a fruitful boy, a fruitful boy by a well. His branches run over the wall. The archers have bitterly grieved him, shot at him, and hated him, but his bow remained in strength. And the arm of his hand were made strong by the hand of the mighty God of Jacob. From there is shepherd and the stone of Israel. The Lord bless the reading and hearing of his word in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to consider some few things from this particular passage because there is no doubt that when we are looking at the story of someone who made it, this man happened to be one of the people that made it in life. We are not really considering is a life story as it were. But we want to consider some principles that made him an outstanding, outstanding success in life. And like you know that principles, they work anywhere in the world. Principles are spiritual laws. Just like we have physical laws, we have physical laws, and we have spiritual laws. But when it comes to spiritual principle, it's eternal. And what works for Joseph can actually work for us today. So we'll go right there into some of the things that help this young man called Joseph to succeed. Because he was there in his father's house, he was beloved. He found himself, when they sold him to slavery, they cherished him. When he was in prison, the order, they have to rest. He was in charge. So, it's just all around. Of, of course, when he got to the throne, not only that he saved his generation, he saved the entire world. What are the principles that help this young man? Number one is fellowship with God. Fellowship with God. This young man called Joseph had an unbroken fellowship with God. His circumstances kept changing. But relationship of this young man with God remained consistent. It, he, his fellowship with God remained constant. He has fellowship with God when he was a favored son of his father and God was communicating, communicating with him. There is a communication between him and God. That's why as we read in the book of the Bible in Genesis 37 
Genesis 37, verses 5 and 9. Genesis 37, verses 5 and 9. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brethren. And they hated him yet the more. It takes people who fellowship to be able to get the glimpse of the future. He grew up with a vision about his life. Soon the circumstances changed in his life. He became a slave in the house of Potiphar, later a prisoner in jail. But the fellowship with God was unaffected. God was with him all the time. I don't know how a prisoner could, could, could interpret a dream. Now, here that 37 I read, Genesis 37 verse 9, Genesis 37 verse 9, the brother hated him. They hate him. But he said again, and he dreamed yet another dream and told it to his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven star made obeisance to me. That's when the father said, eh, Enough of this dream. But when you check chapter 39 of Genesis, verses 2 and 21, Genesis 39, 2 and 21, dream interpretation. Genesis 40, verse 8. Genesis 40, verse 8. Dream interp interpretation. In the, in the prison, he was still interpreting dreams. He was still using his spiritual gift. Adverse circumstances does not affect him in using his, um, his, his gift. There are many people today I don't like the way pastor is looking at me. I don't like the way they are talking about me. And in one of the digging deep we have said there, if you are not, if you are on top, you'll be a topic. If you are not a topic now, it's because you are nowhere. Nobody talk about somebody who's nobody. But if you are somebody, people will talk about you. That they are even talking about you shows that God loves you, shows that you have something to offer. But despite the situation of this young man, he has an unbroken focus, unbroken fellowship with God. That's one of the powerful secrets of, fruit, of, of fruitfulness. You want to be fruitful, you want to be successful. There must be fellowship. When you check the life of the father of this particular young, young man, Jacob will, <coughs> will have been defrauded and cheated permanently when he was working with his uncle. How was he able to get the secret of prosperity, of success? He had a dream. Who taught him to paint a wood and put before a pregnant animal? Because he has a fellowship. You see, the secret of success is in life is just one foot, your feet to the ground. So that's number one thing we can see about this particular young man, fellowship with God. Number two, favor with God. Favor with God, and there is no way you can have favor with God and you will not have favor with man. Very very important. Whenever you have favor with God definitely favor with man will follow. Now in um, the book of Genesis 37 verse 3 Genesis 37 verse 3 the Bible said now Israel loved Joseph more than his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. Coat of many colors. Joseph had favor in the eyes of God and that's why God favored him before 
his father. Everywhere he went, he had favor. Everywhere. When he was in his father's house, he had favor. His father favored him. I pray for someone listening to us, watching. God will give you favor. Amen. And that favor will command the favor of men in the name of Jesus. Amen. His father loved him more than his brother. And when he was a, a slave in Potiphar's house, in Potiphar's house, he had favor in the eyes of Potiphar. When he was a prisoner in jail, he had favor in the eyes of the prison keeper. When he stood before Pharaoh, he had favor in the eyes of Pharaoh, who put him in charge of the whole kingdom. <laughs> Jacob, this, this, particular, this particular man called Joseph, everywhere he goes, he had favor. So, let me quickly say something about this. Because without favor in life, you cannot go far. Because there are many people who depend on their wisdom. They depend on their ability. They depend on their inter intellect, in intellect as it were. But favor can do for you what all the things you taught is available to help you cannot do. Now, because when you check the book of Psalm 90 verse 17, Psalm 90 verse 17, favor, when it's upon your life, the work of your hand will be confirmed. There are people who work today, but nobody recognizes what they are able to do. It was just today that our leader, one of our father in the Lord, our leader, the national pastor, was telling us a story about a man who heard from God. He wanted to go abroad, God said no. He wanted to do this, God said no. So he was wondering, why should God do this to me? But then, he was inspired by God to write a book. And that book landed him into a multi-millionaire. One book, not two. Not three. Not four, not ten. So, favor will make a dummy, an eye flyer. Because in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11, it's not by your own strength. It's not by your own power. No, it is, it's, just, just, it's not how far you can run. Because the race is not to the sweet. Time and chances happening to them all. And in Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6, Zechariah chapter, Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6, the Bible said, not by mind, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Favor, when you have it, which is very important, I like to zero in because we will not have other time to be able to look at it in, um, in, in, in detail. Now, when you have favor upon your life, it brings you to prominence. Bring you to prominence. You have a preferential treatment. Somebody say, are you sure? Esther, in Esther chapter 2 verse 17, Esther 2 verse 17 was a slave. No mother, no father. She was adopted by Mordecai, a great man. But when they were looking for queen, she was preferred. And I pray that you'll be preferred from today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, favor produced or produces it. This is what I want to say. Favor, we activate answers to your petition. Your petition will be granted even from the ungodly ungodly civil authority. In Esther chapter 5 verse 2 and verse 8. Esther chapter 5 verse, verses 2 and 8. The Bible said this lady 
our petition was granted. In the book of Psalm 44 verse 3, Psalm 44 verse 3, favor may God to fight your battle for you. There are people who say, leave me alone, I can do it. The battle of life is not something you can do on your own. This particular young man called Joseph had favor with God. And I pray that we have favor with God as from today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number three, this young man, faithfulness in his responsibility, faithfulness, anywhere you put this man, you can go and sleep. The, this young man, very faithful, very faithful, very, very faithful. He was very faithful. Joseph was faithful in his responsibility. When his brother were doing evil, he was faithful re reporting to his father. That's another story for another time. Because this young man called Joseph, sometimes, it depends on the angle we are looking at it from. Reporting your brother is not um, the good thing you should do. But from where I came from, I don't know how I can interpret it literally. They said somebody who stole a palm oil from the roof is not as guilty as somebody who helped him to, to, to get it to the ground. So he will have been a collaborator of evil. But for this boy, he said, no, I am not a partaker. We are in a state of things. In many organizations today, People say, ah, I don't want them to, I don't want them, I don't want them to quote me. If you, you don't want people to quote you, then you are not faithful enough. Because the truth cannot be factorized. The truth is always the truth. And we have said it many times. You need a lot of wisdom to tell lies. Because when you tell a lie, you need an advanced demonic wisdom to to defend that lie. And as you are defending it, the lie keep aggravating. <laughs> Many a time when I see people, something that is non-public to me, and they are telling lie about it, I say, oh, fix yourself. You have fixed yourself. You just confess. Finish. Once you confess, it's gone. Maybe you have heard the story of a man who stole a chicken. He stole a chicken, killed a chicken, and why he was supposed to be chicken, the supervisor found it and said, I will go and report you. He said, don't report me because even the money I'm getting here is not enough. Okay, the supervisor said, let's reach a deal. You will be doing over time. I'll be collecting the money. So the, 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 the man agreed. So one day, he said, I, I've done over time for, for about three months. Even that three months is more, you can buy four chicken. I'm not going to pay again. So the man supervisor came and said, Chiki! The man said, over time. <laughs> Chiki! So the man said, okay. After six months, the man said, am I not crazy? How, how could I be laboring? So he went to the boss and said, sir, nine months ago I stole a chicken. And I'm sorry I've, I, I'm sorry. He, and he must say, ah, nine months ago, what has happened? He said, ah, I'm suffering in silence. The man said, you are forgiven. So the man came usually because after the man collected his overtime money, the other said, cheeky! The man said, cheeky! The man said, overtime! The man said, overtime! He said, I'm going to report to God. The one said, I have reported myself. So when you own up, you are free. And there are many people today, you can't find them. They are, they are, they are, they are not safe for a problem. But for this man, he was so faithful. When you look at the story of this particular Joseph of Possum, he was a faithful, he was a faithful man. 
In Genesis chapter 39, verses 6, verses 22, verses 23. They are talking about his faithfulness. In fact, Genesis chapter uh, Genesis chapter 37, verse 2. Genesis 37, verse 2 said, These are the generation of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the son of Bilia, with the son of Silpa, and his father's wife. And Joseph brought unto his father evil reports, just to be sure that no, I cannot be a collaborator of evil. He was concerned about the family or not. He continued to be faithful. Even when he was a slave in Potiphar's house. Potiphar was not expecting the work of Joseph, but Joseph was faithful. Even when no one was watching his work. Can we entrust you with something that we don't need to work at? I'm not talking about your title. Because there are so many title holders today, but there's nothing to write about them. His amazing faithfulness continued even while he was in prison. When he was falsely, I mean, falsely accused, and they threw him into the prison. He should have, he should have said, no, I'll be faithful to God. Why should I be faithful? But he did not give up his faithfulness. He did not question. Um, whether it's worthy to be faithful or whether it should not be, it should do otherwise. It was just going. He took charge of everything. His faithfulness made people to commit responsibility, more responsibility to him. There are people today, when you see people dancing around you, you see a muzzle available. Maybe it's true. Your attitude should speak louder than what you say. Because it is your commitment to a responsibility that will make people to know that they can commit more. Not you will be able to determine. Those who are watching you, those who are ahead of you, they are the one who is able to, to know this. So Joseph was, faith, was faithful. Some people today, they are faithful, not faithful. Faithful is high service. And we have quite a lot in all organizations. Only high service. So his faithfulness in all responsibility is, was a powerful secret of uh, fruitfulness. Number four, fear of God. Fear of God. I, I like that young man. Because as we read the story in Genesis 39, 7 to 20, Genesis 39, 7 to 20, he feared God. He said, how can I do this? He said, how can I do this and sin against my God? He was so he was so afraid of God. And the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. You know, I didn't quote many verses today. Not because there are, there, there are no verses to quote. But there are things that you need to bear in mind. Something that can just hold you. And you are able to say, yes, I am able. I mean, I, I, I know about it. Something they want me to say to you. They will ask you, what is the secret of success? You say fellowship. You say favor with God. You can talk about Faithfulness, and you can talk about fear of God. Joseph asked fear of God in his heart. When the woman caught her, caught him and said, You must sleep with me. Do you see? Can you see what he said? How can I do this great wickedness and sin against my God? Even nobody, if nobody was present. To witness this sin, he was concerned about sinning against God, who was watching him at all time. He refused to yield. Can we actually vouch for you when nobody is there? 
Do you have a secret that even your wife, that your pastor, that your friend shouldn't know about? The fear of God was the great protection in the life of Joseph. And it brought, it brought him to an abundant blessing. Anyone who wants to prosper in life, you want to succeed in ministry, you want to succeed in business, you need to be afraid of God. You need to fear God. And I pray today, the God that you serve, the God that you are afraid of, we make you and help you to be fruitful in the name of Jesus. Number five, forgiving nature. Forgiving nature. Now, when you look at the life of Joseph, this great man of God, you can see the nature of forgiveness. The one that catch my attention was Genesis chapter 50. Reading from verse 19 to 21. Genesis chapter 50. 19 to 21. It catches my attention for quite a while. The brother of Joseph, they forged a letter. And they said, our father before he died, ask us to give you this letter. That please forgive your brethren. He laughed. He laughed. He said, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. To keep our nation and to keep the entire world. And Paul, that great man of God, said in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. All things will work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. You may be going through issues. All things will work together. They may have lied against you. All things will work together. They have falsely accused you. All things will work together. Someone betrayed you. All things will work together. Joseph had a forgiving heart. He had no bitterness or resentment against those who harm him. His brother has caused untold suffering. Very, very terrible untold hardship they put upon his life. He had pleaded with his brother not to send him to slavery. But his brother did not show mercy to him. Even when they saw his anguish, they didn't they didn't do nothing about it. Potiphar wife falsely accused him and the husband doesn't have the courtesy of asking Joseph. He just took the man, cast him in prison, prison without trial. That's to show the level of, uh, the, level of the rule and law that they practice in that particular time. So, Potiphar was falsely accused, but it was very painful that they damaged his reputation. But he was an upright man. For you to accuse somebody of, of such serious immorality, send him to prison. A great injustice against him, but he was not looking for vengeance. I imagine myself, if I'm Joseph, and Potiphar has to call to the palace. Because as soon as Joseph became uh, the ruler, even Potiphar has to come to the palace and bow. And I imagine myself, have mercy on me. I will tell him, please, Potiphar, Mr. Potiphar, just go, just pack aside. I, I, would, I want to talk to you. Or I tell him, please go out, let me talk to the other chief. Just to be able to prove the point. But thank God for Joseph. He has a forgiven spirit. Way back in the Old Testament was teaching us the spirit of forgiveness. In spite of this, of this suffering, he maintained a heart of forgiveness. He was not tied down by the spirit of anger and vengeance. He forgave his brother. Brothers who heartedly. A bitter attitude 
will surely ruin any life, any day. And that will have ruined the happiness of Joseph. And that will have ruined his, faithful, his fruitfulness and success. But his forgiving nature was a powerful secret of his success. And I pray God will give us such a spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. Even Jesus today, yeah, it was uh, our leader that was talking also. That said, Jesus, despite all the things we did, he made us. And the thing he made, slap him, crucify him, spit him upon him. But he just also said, forgive them. I would I imagine. Can I do it? Even the standard, the master Jesus raised so, so, so high. Somebody was seen against you 40 times, seven times. I think 70 times, seven times before you can get annoyed. So, <laughs> it is three times. It is 70 times seven. That's, uh, that's, quite, that's quite huge. So we need to have a forgiving nature. Number six, which is the second to the last, fortitude. 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 In the book of Psalm 105, verse, Psam 105 verses 19 to 20. Psalm 105, 19 to 20. Until the time that is what came, the word of the Lord tried him. The king sent and loosed him, and even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. Joseph had fortitude and endurance. He did not get discouraged and backslide. He waited for God's time. He committed everything to God and endured till the end. He endured hatred. Genesis 37.4 he endured envy. He endured envy. Genesis 37 and 11. He endured slavery. He endured slavery. Genesis 37 28. Genesis 37 28. He endured, he endured temptation. Temptation. Genesis 39 7 to 10. Genesis 39 7 to 10. He endured false accusation. False accusation. Genesis 39, 14. Genesis 39, 14. He endured prison life. Prison life. Genesis 39, 20. He endured ingratitude. Ingratitude. Genesis 40, 23. But Joseph did not give up, did not give up hope. He did not go away from God. The time came when God delivered him and lifted him up above everyone. He submitted everything, his life, his destiny, in the hand of God. And God blessed him abundantly in due time. His fortitude was a powerful secret of his success. Beloved, you may be going through issues. There are things you don't know anything about, you are suffering about. But note it. It may be for your good. It may be for the future. And God is still able to do exceeding abundantly. And number seven is um, he was filled with the spirit. Anyone that will, make it, that, will make, that will be successful in life must be filled with the spirit of God. Joseph was filled with the spirit of God. There was a supernatural dimension to his life. Do you know that even non-believer like Pharaoh was able to discern the anointing of God upon the life of Joseph? He has his servants. Can we find such a one as this as this is? A man in whom the spirit of God is. Way back in Genesis. He was able to decide that the Spirit of God was upon me. Anyone who made it to success, anyone who has success in anything he does, must be filled with the Spirit. And we have said it. 
Don't be a Christian who doesn't have the Holy Spirit. You must be filled with the Spirit of God. You must have that Spirit of God working in your life. It is very, very important. Why, why was he able to, to interpret the dream? Because he was filled with, his, with the Spirit of God. He was able to unveil the mystery. The Spirit helped Joseph to be able to live a good life. What are we saying? Joseph's secret is still very tenable in our day. Anyone who wants to succeed as Christian, you must have fellowship with God. Fellowship with God and you must secure the favor of God. You must be faithful in, the, in your responsibility, whether minor or major. You must fear God. That's number four. You must have forgiving nature. That's number five. Fortitude is number six. And you must be filled with the Spirit. We may not always understand, that's my conclusion, what is happening to us. But the Lord is always in control. Whatever happens in lives, Whatever, whatever people intend, God order it for his own children. Remember that when only when God allows things that that could happen. There are many things that, that has happened in our life. When you remember it, it looked very sad at that time, but has led us to where we are. I've said, I've told you my story. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been a pastor or a full-time pastor if my traveling abroad at the time I want to travel, really, <laughs> really, really go through. But thank God, all things is meant to work together for good. I encourage you today, whatever you may be going through, is part and parcel. And if you have not been born again, please give God a chance so that He will be able to lead you, He will be able to direct you to success. And if you are born again, you are going through issues, let's pray together. Just as he helped the man called Joseph, he can help you again. Let's pray together. If you want to get born again, put your hand on your chest as I pray. And if there are issues in your life, God is in charge. Father, we want to thank you for people who are giving their life today. We ask that your hand will reach out to them. Save them and write their name in the book of life. Forgive all their sins. And those who are going through certain issues, they don't even know why. Today, let the lessons of Joseph come alive and give them victory. And let all glory and honor be yours permanently. Thank you, eternal Father. And when the rock come up in heaven, let us be able to reign with Christ. Thank you, our maker. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Remember that your service is not a complete service until you give your offering. But listen to this. They will put some things on the on the on the screen. Make sure you drop your offering. But at the same time, let me say a word of prayer. Father, everyone who package their offering and they are transferring it and doing something about it, bless all of them. And Lord, let the glory of God manifest. Receive that offering. And in the kingdom of heaven, we will not miss our reward. Thank you, eternal Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Drop your own and I will drop my own too. God bless you.